Good evening, everyone. I have a cold, so I'm going to make this short and sweet. Um, it was six years ago I decided to run for city council with a different city manager that I thought I would be serving under. And I did it because I felt the last four or five years before that, after the great recession and the loss of GM, that our city could be doing a lot more than it was. It was stagnant and it was fearful of what, what, what we could do or what we could accomplish. Soon after we put our hat in the ring, uh, Mr. Levitt decided to re resign and move on to California. Smart move in hindsight here. Um, and so the, the challenge came to the city council to find somebody to lead the city. And um, we had many applicants. And the coach that we hired, uh, the search coach, had said, that, don't discount this guy from the Army. He's got something, and he says, I can't put my finger on it, but he's definitely worth considering. And he made the cut, and he made the finals. And when we were interviewing Mr. Freitag for the position, it seemed like we had a shared vision that the city needed a mission, it needed a goal, it needed some place that it needed to move forward to. And move forward was the key. We couldn't just sit and put things off and delay and wait till things got better. It was time to take action and get the city moving. And that was six years ago, and I think anyone that was in the city six years ago can look around the city on north, south, east, west, downtown, and see how much better Janesville has improved over the last six years of Mark Freitag's leadership and the momentum that's going to build, that's going to lead us for another 5, 10, 15, 20 years into the future. And so with that, I'm very proud to introduce our city manager, Mark Freitag. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you that uh, we can start this out, make it short and sweet. The state of the city is cold. <laughs> all right, so it's all done. What else do we need to say? Um, but seriously, uh, thank you very, uh, very much to Council President Mark Klein for those very kind words. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, uh, and welcome to the city's fifth annual State of the City Address. I'd like to begin by recognizing some of our special guests. We've been joined tonight by um, five of our city council members. So you've already met Council President Mark Lyon. Sitting next to him is Council Member Williams. Uh, we have uh, Council Member Farrell sitting right here. Council Vice President uh, Wolf, and sitting next to him uh, is Council Member uh, Conley. And so thank you very much to the council members for attending. Uh, we also have County Board Chair Russ Podzilny uh, sitting in the middle of the back. Appreciate him being here and certainly we got a nice uh, turnout of community partners um, and citizens, residents, uh, business leaders uh, and, uh, and folks that the city partners with regularly and so we just want to say thank you to everyone uh, for coming out tonight. Um, we do want to say a special thank you to Edmund Halabi from the Italian House. Uh, you know, he's one of the he's the one who provided the delicious sandwiches that uh, we all enjoyed during the open house, and it looks like we're still enjoying them middle of the back. So that's awesome. Keep going if you want to go back for seconds. There's plenty there. Um, but I would tell you that Edmund uh, is a great community partner. Uh, w runs a wonderful business. Been here for a very very long time. A great representative of our uh, community, and we're just very very grateful that we've got uh, people like Edmund that uh, support the city and, uh, and lead in this community. And so the next thing that I want to do real quick is uh, recognize uh, the great city employees that we have uh, that uh, serve this community. Um, you know, folks, we've got 561 city employees uh, that, uh, that serve this community. They choose a path of public service. Um, there are probably other things that they could do uh, in their community or in their professional careers, but they choose to serve this community. Um, and some of them, you know, frankly, uh, have been working very, very hard over these last couple days in some extremely cold temperatures and haven't heard a complaint, an issue, a concern from any one of them. They're, they know that the community uh, expects uh, great service. They provide that great service. And so could you join me in uh, a round of applause for our great city employees? <laughs> 
And so for Molly, I'm a little off script already and we've just started. Um, but uh, the other thing that I want to do tonight is do a special recognition. So. Um, you know, I, I've uh, brought a military tradition to the community, uh, certainly to the city workforce, and that's uh, a city coin. Um, and there's lots of history and tradition behind a city coin, but essentially you give it to people and you recognize excellence. It's a coin of excellence. And so um, four years ago, uh, um, I brought somebody on board to the city who's been, you know, my partner in crime, uh, not literally chief, where are you? Okay, nothing illegal going on here. Um, but. Uh, he and I have been like this for the past four years, um, and that's our deputy city manager, Ryan McHugh. So I'd ask Ryan to come forward. So if you stand right here, I got a couple things just to say for a second, right. and then we'll do the coin. But uh, um, for folks who don't know, uh, you know, Ryan serves as the deputy city manager. And so when I hired him, I specifically went out looking for somebody who had uh, qualities and skill sets that frankly complemented my weaknesses, the things that I am not strong in. And so I was looking for somebody who understood Wisconsin and economic development. I was looking for somebody who understood uh, municipal financing. I was looking for somebody who had some kind of idea of what the assessment process is all about and how that works. And I was looking for somebody who had some experience with elections, with the clerk treasurer's functions, with accounting, money in, money out. Um, and, fr and frankly, Ryan uh, filled that to a T and has done a great job. And oh, by the way, as my number two, he's the guy who helps me run the city. Um, when I can't do something, he's the one who steps up. Um, when I was a young major uh, in Fort Polk, Louisiana, which is not someplace most people would want to be, um, I was in my first, if you will, executive level job as a number two, squadron executive officer, about seven to 800 soldiers in the squadron. And my squadron commander pulled me in and said, you know, welcome to the team, Mark. What a squadron, what a squadron executive officer does, a number two does three things. Number one, you do everything that the boss tells you to do. Number two, uh, you generally are gonna do all the things that the boss doesn't wanna do. But most importantly, what a number two does is a number two does all the things that the boss doesn't even think about that need to get done, and the number two gets them done. And Ryan, again, does that in spades. So I just wanna say thanks to Ryan for all that you do. Thanks, Mark. Keep up the good work. Thanks, <laughs> So now it's time to get this thing going. Uh, so I'd be remiss if I didn't, off, didn't start off by officially saying that the state of the city is strong. So, so this will be our agenda this evening, uh, pretty standard from what we've used in previous years. And so many of you already understand the city organization, but for those who don't, I thought it might be helpful to do a quick review. We currently have 561 city employees, uh, both full and part-time, to provide what I call the full spectrum of municipal uh, services. It's a large organization, it's a diverse organization, and frankly, it's a complex organization. When you think about policing, to wastewater management, to finance and accounting, uh, to assessing, you name it, it's got the full gamut. Citizens are at the top of the large uh, local government structure. We're here, uh, we are here to provide all of you effective municipal services that are responsive to the needs of our residents, our businesses, and our visitors. There are seven city council members that serve at large, which means that each one of them represents the community as a whole, instead of, as some communities do, with a, uh, a, a district or a series of wards. The city also has 15 standing boards, commissions, and committees, and they are appointed by, the members are appointed by either the council president or the city manager, and their role is to advise the council. We also have five main departments across the city structure, including police, fire, neighborhood and community services, public works, and although not necessarily tied to the city manager, certainly one of our main departments and uh, community asset that we're very, very proud of, the Hedberg Public Library led by Brian McCormick uh, sitting uh, on the side um, across the uh, room. 
So in 2014, the City Council adopted the City's first five-year strategic plan. Each year, the City staff develops the next five-year iteration of the plan, and then the Council approves it as they did this past December when they approved the 2019 to 2023 plan. To begin the presentation, I'd like to recap some of the progress and the accomplishments of 2018. So the strategic plan defines nine goals that drive the city's movement forward over a five-year period. They are of equal importance and as such listed alphabetically as opposed to some hierarchy. As I circulate across the city, I continue to hear comments that there's real progress in the community and that there's momentum in the downtown. I would wholly agree and believe that this progress, this momentum is based upon, number one, a good economy. Uh, frankly, you know, if the economy is growing, people are going to do things. They're going to build things. They're going to create opportunity. They're going to create jobs. And that's happening in Janesville today, and it has been now for several very, very good years. And as a community, we welcome those changes. Number two, a strategic plan. The city is making decisions not based upon individual whims or good ideas or resource uh, uh, driven uh, ideas, but instead we plan for things, we budget for those things, and then we execute those things. And I would tell you that the system is working, um, as Council President Markline uh, outlined, we're making things happen because we're not getting sidetracked, we're staying focused. That's huge. And then thirdly, I think we've got community buy-in. Uh, the community sees progress, they see momentum, they want to be part of the solution, um, and they want to be a part of the process. So we've got people that are standing up saying, we want to volunteer, we want to help, how can we donate either time uh, or money or, you know, perhaps uh, programs or services, um, supplies, you name it. I mean, the outpouring has been phenomenal and we'll highlight a couple of those. But the key is uh, that, uh, you know, you've got number one and number two working and number three is just falling, uh, is just occurring very, very naturally. So I'd like to highlight a few, but certainly not all of our major accomplishments in 2018 for each of our goal areas. The first goal of our plan is the downtown. We define that as positioning our downtown as a vibrant neighborhood where commerce, culture, entertainment, and history intersect. 2018 was certainly a robust year for Arise implementation. The city was able to secure $1.75 million in grants for the town square improvements that we executed this year. Last year alone, we completed many downtown improvement projects, including West Side Town Square completion, the conversion of Court Street to two-way traffic, J.P. Cullen Memorial Pavilion and interactive water feature dedication, the creation of our outdoor fitness court, the completion of Festival Street, and we began replacement uh, earlier this, uh, uh, I guess this winter, earlier this winter, uh, of the Milwaukee Street Bridge. So in October, we celebrated fun on the Festival Street, a community event that launched the opening of Festival Street, a two block section of River Street that has been designated and designed specifically for community events such as concerts, markets, and even street dances. I can't wait for that one. The second phase of the amenities at Court River and Dodge Streets include improved pedestrian and traffic barriers, accessible electricity for public events and vendors, improved walkability for pedestrians, the beautified Doty Mill Alley that was a result of an LDA of Rock County project, um, our state-of-the-art outdoor fitness court, and of course, the pavilion and our water feature uh, themselves. Our second strategic goal is to facilitate continued growth and diversification of our local economy. In 2018, there were $24.2 million in private investment as a result of the city's TIF development agreements. So TIF development agreements in 2018 led to 299,300 square feet of additional building space and created 66 new jobs within our community. In 2018, 82 new home permits were issued, including eight duplexes, and we issued 3,659 permits, which included building permits, mechanicals, fences, pools, et cetera, et cetera. Last year, we did see the beginnings of redeveloping at the for redevelopment at the former General Motors assembly plant and the newly named Centennial Industrial Park is well underway. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the 
timed uh, pictures that have been taken by the Gazette staff that are online. It's absolutely fantastic to go back to what that looked like the 1st of May in 2018 and where we're at today. Um, it's a tremendous uh, effort um, and uh, significant certainly for our future. Uh, as you all know, two new hotels broke ground in 2018, the Cobblestone Hotel here in the downtown and Town Place Suites by Marriott at the former Menard site. So as we continue, it's helpful to look at some of the economic indicators uh, that are based on the Census Bureau's American Community Survey. And I'll tell you, it does lag behind a little bit, so these numbers may not seem as positive as you would think, but it, uh, it's the best that we have that's a standard. Um, first of all, the median home value is up $3,600 in Janesville from the previous year. Our median household income, and this is significant, is up from the previous year at 50,300 a year ago to 55,304 today. So that's a significant improvement, 10%. Fortunately, our poverty rate decreased 1.4% from the previous year. It's slightly higher than the state average, but lower than the national average. Our unemployment rate decreased almost half a percent from October 2017 to 2018, down to 2.9 percent and is lower than the rest of the country. Folks, that's a great news story. Um, a lot of communities wish that they were in that same boat, but that's a wonderful uh, story, 2.9 percent. Lastly, in 2018, there were 1,417 property sales within the city. This number is slightly down from the last year, but substantially higher than years prior to 2017. The next goal on our strategic plan is to remain a responsible and forward-thinking steward of our financial resources. In recent years, the city has launched two websites to put our financial books out for public view. The open budget and the open expenditures websites allow the community to see detailed interactive financial data all the way back to 2008. This helpful graphic shows how property taxes are distributed for city services. As you can see, police and fire services require the most funding at about 50% of every dollar, or 50 cents out of every dollar. And then Public Works comes in at about uh, 19 uh, cents or so. Um, but those three departments consume a significant chunk, and then the rest of it happens um, with uh, just under uh, 30%. So this chart is going to show how Janesville stacks up compared to our peer cities in terms of the amount of property taxes and state shared revenue we get to fund the full spectrum of municipal services. In fact, Janesville would receive an additional $6 million in revenue if we were funded at the level of our average peer city and an additional $2.5 million just to be tied with the next lowest community. Folks, that's significant. We talked with our legislators about that, uh, what was that, two weeks ago, um, and we got to get this fixed, and the only folks that are going to get this fixed uh, are our state legislators and the uh, state administration. We need their help fixing that, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So due to our persistent lobbying efforts with our state legislature, the city was successful in receiving an additional $583,000 in state funding per year for five years to partially offset the inequitable distribution of state shared revenue. While that funding has allowed us to hire three more firefighters, three additional police officers, and reduce our base transit fare, you can also see what a small difference that nearly $600,000 makes. Um, that's a big, big difference as far as what we were able to gain from it, but it really didn't move us very, very far on the graph, did it? So the city will continue to fight this inequitable distribution of state shared revenue. And my, my ask of you all, the community that, that's gathered here, but the larger community that may be watching at home or watch this later on, I encourage all of you to contact our local legislators and urge them to consider legislative action on these issues to fix state shared revenue um, and ensure that it is equitably distributed across the cities, the municipalities, the villages um, of our great state. So though we rely uh, very heavily on property tax and state shared revenue to fund our operations, we also receive many grants and donations throughout the year to complete projects, fund programs, replace equipment, and more. 
In 2018, we received approximately $16 million in grants and donations. Of note, that $16 million does, does include the library receiving uh, $400,000 in donations in 2018. To date, Hedberg Public Library has received $1.4 million for their capital improvement uh, project, which will begin this year. A great news story, a testament to the, um, to the love and admiration that the community has for the library. Um, and we've got just a little bit further to go before they're at full funding um, and we can complete those projects here uh, this next uh, spring, summer, and fall. So our next goal is to strategically communicate the city's strengths, priorities, and initiatives while maintaining trust and confidence through effective engagement. Some of the major accomplishments in 2018 from this area include, we've seen a steady uptick in social media engagement as you can see from this recent graph on our Park Place Performs dashboard. Instead of marked spikes in engagement, we want to continue to see a more steady increase in our social media presence. This goes for Facebook, Twitter, as well as the folks who receive the city's press releases via email. Park Place Views, which is our award-winning monthly cable program that keeps Janesville residents informed by highlighting the people, places, events, and partners in the city of Janesville, reached a benchmark in 2018. The November episode of Park Place Views was the 50th episode of the show, and this cable access show will continue well into 2019. So I encourage you to tune in to Charter Channel 994 or go to the JATV's website uh, on YouTube or site on YouTube, or you can go to the city's website to view Park Place Views. Um, but it's a great way to learn about uh, the city and about our community. So as everyone is appreciating and enjoying right now, our fourth floor of the Janesville City Hall, including the city's council chambers, underwent needed renovations and updates bringing the facility into the 21st century. On August 3rd, 2018, exactly 50 years to the day since the original dedication of City Hall, the city hosted a rededication ceremony of the uh, council chambers to celebrate this new, uh, newly renovated public space. Aside from the beautiful interior design, the chambers are more accessible, spacious, and provide amenities such as bigger screens and voting equipment for the city council, the boards, the commissions, the committees, and then those who attend our public meetings. Our next goal is to build upon the community's foundation of well-planned, maintained, dependable, and sustainable infrastructure. There were certainly a lot of infrastructure milestones that were achieved this year, but I'll highlight a few. Uh, first of all, something we're very excited about is Janesville Transit System secured funding for 14 replacement buses covering 80% of that total expenditure, that total cost. Every JTS bus, and we have 17 in the fleet, every single one of them is beyond its life cycle, either by years, which is 12, or by mileage, which is 500,000 miles per bus. Think about that, all 17 are past their useful life. So we've got 14 new ones that are inbound, and that's a great news story. As we move to the Milwaukee Street Bridge, that replacement began, if you remember, early, uh, I guess late fall, early winter. Uh, the bridge was over 100 years old and it was time for the city to rehabilitate the failing structure. Uh, this is certainly part of our uh, Arise uh, Town Square initiative and the Milwaukee Street Bridge is the northern edge of that square or town square. Between resurfacing and reconstructing, a total of almost 12 miles of city streets were rehabilitated in 2018. We spread this amount of work equally throughout the community so specific areas of the city aren't forgotten. We maintain a total of 330 miles of city-owned and managed and maintained roads. Uh, and uh, so rehabilitating 12 miles per year keeps you on track over a 25-year average life cycle of the road. Our next goal is to embrace and enhance collaboration with local, regional, national, and global stakeholders to realize shared success. The successful partnerships in 2018 are many. Some of them include the creation of the African American Liaison Advisory Committee um, by the Janesville Police Department, the intergovernmental agreement that uh, JFD uh, negotiated, sponsored, and worked um, with the Milton Fire Department, 
We've done multiple projects with Forward Janesville, Downtown Janesville Incorporated, um, and our Business Improvement District. The city uh, celebrated the success of the Oak Hill Chapel restoration project with our friends uh, at the Friends of Oak Hill Chapel. Uh, that was this past June. The Camden playground renovation was completed in 2018 with our partners at the Camden Foundation. And as mentioned before, the outdoor fitness court was built and unveiled with SSM Health and the National Fitness Campaign. Another goal is to cultivate an organizational environment that empowers an engaged, innovative, and diverse municipal workforce. We have a great city team that does so much behind the scenes so that the community can thrive. There are too many examples of city employees performing well to list here, but I think just what's happened these last couple days across the city is a great testament to that. I would like to point out that in 2018, the city hired and promoted 186 employees, which includes our seasonal workforce. And again, we run 561 full and part-time employees, and then based upon the time of the year and the season, we hire up to an additional 60 to 80 employees uh, to carry us through that particular season. We encourage everyone to check out the city's job website for employment opportunities. It's a great team, a great organization to be a part of. We also established a health advisory committee and a wellness team to increase the health and the wellness of city employees and their families. Another strategic goal of our strategic plan is to promote, enhance, and respect the unifying feature of our community, the mighty Rock River. All of the work being done for the ARISE plan certainly contributes to this goal, but I'll also highlight the extensive work done for the Monterey Area River Restoration Project. With the successful removal of the Monterey Dam in 2018, the city will recreate a more natural shoreline with many amenities so that the residents and visitors of Janesville can better enjoy all that the river has to offer. Imagine fishing off of the river steps, launching your kayak or canoe right into the calm Rock River waters, although this late summer and early fall, not so calm, um, or stopping for a waterfront prick picnic while you're riding your bike along the Ice Age Trail. Our final goal is to advance safety and overall well-being of the residents and neighbors through cooperation and encouraging an active lifestyle. The Janesville Police Department received the Forward Janesville Community Improvement Award in January of 2018. This past fall, we were notified that the Janesville Fire Department was recognized as having one of the top three best cardiac survivability rates in the entire nation uh, behind Seattle and Tucson uh, at 45%. So if you're gonna have a cardiac event, being in Janesville is the place to be. <laughs> In 2018, the Janesville Fire Department handled, and this number will just absolutely boggle your mind, 10,257 calls for service, which averages 28 in incidents per day. That's a lot of, a lot of uh, trips out there for fire engines and ambulances. They stay very busy. We're very, very proud of what they provide for the community. Um, what that does, though, is that that makes Janesville and our fire department uh, one of the very busiest fire departments in the entire state. Neighborhood and Community Services uh, Department initiated the vacant building program for both vacant commercial properties as well as vacant residential properties. Our Recreation Division had 265,042 people participate in recreation programs over 2018. That's a lot of stuff, and Shelly, you and your team stay very busy, I know. And lastly, JM4C, that's Janesville Mobilizing for Change, received a three-year, $100,000 per year grant for educating and preventing alcohol and prescription drug abuse among teens. And so what a great uh, opportunity to engage our at-risk teens, um, and we appreciate all that Erin Davis and her team do at JM4C. So we're right on track, because um, I've got a little note here to check time. Thank you, Molly. Uh, 2018 was a great year, but it's now 2019, and so let's talk about what's to come. We have too many projects planned for 2019 to mention all of them, but I'll highlight just one or two of the top priorities from each of our goal areas. In the downtown, we're looking forward to continued partnership with DJI, The Bid, Forward Janesville, JPAC, and others to support and promote downtown events, including the use of our new Festival Street. 
Neighborhood and community services will be promoting and facilitating additional market rate and affordable housing projects downtown. As many of you know, Janesville does have some challenges when it comes to affordable housing for um, both uh, single family and multifamily uh, occupancy. In 2019, uh, Big project in the Arise project, besides completing Milwaukee Street Bridge, um, will be the construction of the Blaine Gilbertson Family Heritage Bridge, which this is tremendous, is funded uh, entirely by private donations raised by Ford Foundation. Uh, that's great news for the community because that talks again to that community buy-in of what we're doing specifically in our downtown. Moving on to the economy, uh, the city will be looking to partner with a developer to build uh, Janesville Innovation Center uh, number two. Uh, we, if you've been down on Beloit Avenue south uh, side of town, we have our Janesville Innovation Center. Um, currently, you know, there are 5,000 square foot manufacturing bays and smaller um, uh, rooms or bays. Uh, and so we've recognized in the community that there's a gap between that 5,000 square foot point and about a 25,000 square foot point. And so we envision JIC 2 um, uh, in cooperation with a developer of being something that could fill that void or that gap in the community. And so we'll be working on that um, into 2019. Uh, looking at financial sustainability as we've done over the last few years, we'll continue to bolster our legislative agenda and lobby the legislature on levy limits and re uh, revenue sources. And we will continue to serve our community uh, on restricted revenue limits that are distributed, as we have already mentioned, at an in inequitable rate. The city assessor's office has been hard at work through 2018 and already into 2019 on the citywide revaluation. And the process will be completed this year and that's significant for the community. Uh, we wanna get on a schedule of doing that revaluation every two years. Um, that things, keeps things up to date, doesn't create you know, a big disparity between uh, what the fair market is and what the assessed value is um, and keeps things you know, frankly from a, from a citizen perspective at, at an even keel um, as opposed to right now, the last time we did a revaluation was 2011. And so it's been a while since we've uh, you know, gotten essentially um, you know, what's that assessed value across all of our uh, properties in the city. So that'll be a big step, it's a big project. Uh, and then something that, uh, you know, frankly, I had no visibility that was a problem set. Uh, and uh, my team brought this to me and said, you know, we got to fix this there, Freitag. And that's the, the future of the water uh, utilities fund, you know, because if you continue doing what we're doing um, at the rate that we're doing it at, um, it's going to put a burden on future generations that we just can't do that to our children and our grandchildren. So uh, Dave Botts and Max Gagan came to me and said, you know, Mark, we got to fix this. We talked to our council members earlier this summer and said we need to, you know, see about uh, uh, financing this in a different manner. They approved and we're working with the PSC right now um, to, to write that fund. But the way it's heading right now, not a good thing for the community. And so I appreciate the effort of uh, Dave and Max. Um, looking at image and engagement, staff plans to update all of our Google listings. This is important for those of you that are tied to your phones. Um, for city facilities, including uh, public parking lots and buildings. And then, oh, by the way, that carries to all the visitors that are going to be coming to Janesville um, to use all of our great amenities in the downtown and perhaps our future indoor sports uh, facility. That's a plug for the council. So. Um, in 2019, the city is uh, taking our Park Place Performs performance dashboard to the next phase. The website has existed for about two years and now we're working on moving uh, from reporting output to outcomes. Um, and so, you know, that's a significant difference or um, from what we've been doing, um, it's what really all of you are interested in, you know, the, uh, the output, you, that, that data number, that single number, that doesn't do a lot for you. but. What does that mean to you? I think that that's really what we're trying to get to. And so we're gonna be working on that this year. Uh, Maggie Dar is leading that effort and doing a great job. So I'm excited about that. Looking at infrastructure, the Department of Public Works will be completing a citywide inventory of street signs and develop a management replacement system for those signs. For summertime enjoyment, the Recreation Division will complete caulking and painting of the Palmer Park wading pool. To improve accessibility in Janesville, the clerk treasurer's office will be upgrading handicapped accessible voting machines for future elections. You may have noticed that our city hall plaza is in need of renovation. Uh, DPW will complete a, a surface uh, replacement project um, because we have 
the, the deck that you walk in on, uh, which is all concrete, which is the roof of the first floor parking garage. Underneath that is the, uh, the floor of the first floor parking garage, which is also the roof of the basement parking garage. And right now, the salt over the years has leached through those multiple levels, and now the concrete's falling from the roofs to the floor, and we've had it hit a couple cars. Fortunately, it hasn't hit people, um, but we've got holes uh, as big as that JETV uh, workstation uh, in the, the floor of one uh, garage and the roof of the other garage. And so it's time. It's been 50 years since there's been any work in there, and we need to do that um, for public safety, uh, certainly, um, but it's time. And then lastly, I think uh, one of the things that we need to just uh, hit on again, and that is um, Janesville is so, so lucky to have a great uh, library um, in the Hedberg Public Library. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, they're going to be working on that renovation project. Um, that will be going on this year, and I think that they're kind of sequencing the renovation so that it's got the least impact on their normal operations. So a testament to Brian and his team. Um, but Transform Your Library is going to happen in 2019. So moving on to partnerships, for the last several years, the city has partnered with UW-Whitewater for Make a Difference Day, where UWW students spend a day in Janesville working on city projects, such as painting benches, mulching, gardening, and clearing brush and debris out of our parks. We look forward to continuing this partnership this year on April 26, and we invite all of you to participate with us if you would like to. The city is always looking for ways to cultivate effective partnerships with external groups, such as businesses, schools, service groups, and even with our own library. For example, we look forward to partnering with the United Way throughout the year for projects and programs that benefit all of Rock County. The city is also excited about the Rock County Historical Society uh, with their effort to fundraise to repair the rock lookout platform down at Monterey Park. Um, that's the big rock next to the Monterey Bay with the hole in it. Uh, uh, up on top is a platform uh, that was originally, I guess, either designed, uh, installed, whatever, by Rock County Historical Society, and they're going to fundraise um, to do some repairs on it because it's in great, great need of restoration. And so we appreciate them stepping up to that project. As a workforce, the city of Janesville seeks new ways to attract, retain, and mentor a talented and engaged staff. The Human Resources Office uh, will also implement positive changes to its personnel policy manual as a result of a recommendation from an employee committee. We got the results back from our uh, personnel policy review. Um, we went from 240 pages of personnel policies in the city I down to like 140 or something like that, 150. So still a lot, but that's a significant reduction. Um, and it uh, certainly is helpful to city employees to be able to wade through that, but it also protects the city um, you know, from liabilities and things like that. Moving on to the Rock uh, River, so the remainder of the Monterey Area River Restoration Project is slated for completion in 2019. This includes finalization of the work in the downstream park and the wetland area, as well as construction of the stormwater pond within the Monterey Lagoon, grading along the North River Bank, and installation of the walking path and the remaining kayak launch and angler access points. The city is excited to provide this new amenity to the residents and visitors of our great city. The city's IT office does an incredible amount of work with a very limited staff. Uh, we're very, very happy to announce that an additional IT position has been created uh, just to focus on the technology and the equipment, uh, digital equipment that our police and fire departments use. Um, it was approved by the council uh, this past year with the 2019 budget approval process, and we think that's exactly where we need to focus um, our resources is to help police and fire keep up with all that emerging and frankly, very, very quickly emerging uh, technology uh, that you know we gotta stay on top of. It benefits JPD, it benefits uh, JFD, most importantly, it benefits the community of Janesville. Equally important, we are going to replace all of our body-worn cameras for our police officers. It's for their own safety as well as the safety of our public, and so we're excited about that opportunity pending the council's approval of that in our 19, uh, 2019 capital plan. So I wanted to look at uh, our future challenges, and we've talked about these in years past, but it's important for us to you know, kind of drill these uh, again. Um, legislative, can't say it enough, uh, uh, federal and state aid continues to reduce. That's just kind of the nature across the nation and here in Wisconsin. Um, 
Unfortunately, we do get unfunded mandates from both the federal and the and the state level. You know, and what do you do? I mean, where does that money come from? They tell you you got to do something, you know, but it doesn't come with money. So, what are you going to do? Um, and then something that uh, becomes a challenge here uh, in Wisconsin, and that is the area of local control or the erosion of local control. And that is, you know, frankly, there are a whole lot of things that are specific to Janesville that the citizens of Janesville, through their elected leaders, the city council, ought to be able to chart their way forward. Um, and there are some areas where we can't do that. We're restricted um, by, uh, by state law. A good example is, is uh, to levy a, uh, a local state income tax, um, a correction, a, uh, a local sales tax. Uh, we're not authorized to do that in the state of Wisconsin. Um, got 5% at the state level, you got a half a cent or a half percent um, at the county level. Municipalities are forbidden from imposing a local sales tax, but as we discussed with our legislators the other day, um, you know, we know that if we levied a half cent sales tax, we could generate almost eight, nine million dollars. Um, think about what that could do if $583,000 allowed us to get three police officers, three firefighters, and reduce our bus transit system. Imagine what an additional eight to nine million dollars could do for this community. Be a big difference, big difference. Um, economic, uh, obviously we have a housing shortage. We're working with uh, uh, developers here in the area to address um, you know, housing challenges. Uh, you know, I would tell you we met with uh, uh, with some developers that are doing some houses out on the north east side of town. You know, they came to us with some challenges. Uh, our staff got creative. We worked through those challenges, um, and they're going to be building homes here in 2019. Uh, great news story. Um, but you know, if we didn't have the city staff thinking outside the box and figuring out how we can help move this project forward, it wouldn't be happening. Uh, labor force availability, as we said, it's a good problem set to have 2.9% unemployment. That's great. However, we've got we're creating more jobs and more opportunities than we've got people uh, to fill them. And so, you know, we've got people that we want to attract and bring into uh, Janesville. But then you also kind of have to have a place for them to stay, and that then generates and makes that housing shortage a little bit more difficult. So as, as I said, 2.9% unemployment rate, you know, is a great, great news story, but it does come with some challenges. And so we've got to work through those. We'll continue to do that. Uh, fiscal issues, the revenue restrictions, as we've talked about with state shared revenue um, and the inability to uh, um, uh, to raise our levy, beyond, our levy beyond net new construction levels. Um, that continues to be a challenge for the city. Um, and, you know, and frankly, uh, anytime we do have to cut something, some user group in the committee is, or in the community is going to step up and say, hey, don't, don't cut that, cut somebody else's. Um, that's a challenge. That's hard, uh, especially when it comes uh, uh, in budget cycle. And, you know, frankly, uh, out of the five years that I've been doing budgets in the city, uh, typically, you know, uh, we have a pretty significant shortfall that we got to figure out how to uh, overcome. And we've done that successfully all five years, but it doesn't come without challenges of prioritizing what, excuse me, what the city uh, is really going to be able to accomplish with uh, with limited funding. Um, organizational, uh, you know, I'll tell you, uh, aging workforce, average employee is 45. Ryan still uh, is lower than that average, so um, bugs me. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm much higher. Uh, loss of institutional knowledge, certainly when the, when the, uh, the seasoned employees retire. Uh, and, uh, you know, certainly talent development and employee retention are things that we pay a lot of attention to in the city. Um, I will tell you that uh, uh, pay in the city uh, is, um, is good. Uh, it's not great, it's good, um, but the benefits are exceptional. The city council for many, many years in the administration have ensured that the benefits are exceptional for our city employees. And so that's how we retain people. It's how we attract them, it's how we retain them. And that's the benefits package that's provided specifically um, health insurance. Um, and then looking at social, uh, always a challenge, um, you know, and I don't have any good silver bullets on how to solve that, but the general perception of local government, um, you know, none of us are here to do wrong by this, com this community. None of us. We choose to serve the community. That's why we're called public servants. Um, but there's a whole lot of people out there that somehow think uh, that, uh, you know, we are, uh, you know, doing things on the sly or whatever. That's just not the case. That's not who we are. Um, this is an ethical group. Um, um, they, you know, hold the standard. They walk the, they walk the line, and they do great work for this community. Um, but that's a tough one to overcome, um, and certainly embracing diversity and change. Um, I was disappointed to see some statistics uh, in uh, early January, which actually showed um, our diversity numbers. Um, uh, 
not improving. They were getting worse um, for, as a community. And so hopefully that's something that over you know, the next generation we'll see some change, especially as we start to bring in more people to take care of all these jobs that we have openings for. Um, but it's something that the city uh, and the community need to be uh, certainly uh, aware of. Um, but we got some work to do there. Uh, and then environmental, you know, f frankly, uh, we got to watch the Rock River. Um, we certainly don't want the, the lifeblood of our community, the, the major significant natural asset that we have that runs right through the middle of our community. We want to make sure that we take good care of it. We want to make sure that it's um, healthy. Uh, we want to make sure that the fish that are in it, that people are catching. Um, when we take the Monterey Dam out and you can now catch a fish down here at, uh, you know, Milwaukee Street Bridge or Court Street Bridge, we want to make sure that the fish are good to eat um, and uh, that there, it's a sporting uh, type environment. And then brownfields cleanup. We've got a lot of history in the community, certainly for manufacturing. We've got some work to do cleaning that up. Uh, the Reflections Plaza, uh, just saw a note today that we're beginning uh, our phase one uh, testing uh, or inspections um, on the Reflections Plaza as a whole. Um, you know, that has a history of being a manufacturing area. Currently have Beeline, furniture, or Beeline uh, um, Automotive Repair is there. Um, don't really know what that ground looks like. So we got some work to do, but that's the history of a, of a manufacturing town along a river. Um, that's just what we got. Got to work through that problem set, and I'm sure we'll find uh, a great solution in the end, but it's certainly, uh, it's always a challenge. Next. So uh, this year, the question is, is how you can help. This is my call to action. And it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, frankly, um, besides what we've already talked about uh, regarding contacting state legislators uh, to get uh, shared revenue fixed, to get levy limits fixed, to get maybe a, a local sales tax option um, fixed, uh, you know, something this is simple, park, place, pickup. Folks, when I walk in the downtown, uh, everywhere I go, I pick up trash. Um, when I walk in the parks, I pick up trash, and it's simple. Um, if we got 65,000 people uh, in our community uh, picking up you know, the trash when they're out walking around, um, we'd have a much different city. Um, and these are just a couple pictures um, that our great intern snapped uh, you know, here in the area before the snow uh, hit. But I would tell you, I went. Uh, what brought my attention to this is I walked down, uh, and my staff knows this, they don't like walking with me, but if we're, gonna, if we're walking somewhere, uh, we're picking up trash. Um, and uh, it took me 30 minutes to get from City Hall to the town square one day because I was picking up trash. And that's kind of sad um, for a great community. And so I would, uh, we're gonna start tomorrow, we're gonna get this one started, uh, but it's called Park Place Pickup. Thanks to Molly and her team for coming up with this great idea and with the campaign. Um, but I would encourage you that if you're out and about, do your part to keep the community clean. Um, take a bag along with you and pick up a few pieces of trash. Just make sure when you got the bag filled with trash that you put it in the receptacle and don't throw it in the river or some other place, okay? <laughs> Um, but if you could help us out, but that we're going to start that uh, uh, that initiative and that campaign uh, this year into 2019. So uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, I would remind you that uh, you can always stay connected to the city by liking us on Facebook, following us on following us on Twitter receiving emergency updates from our JPD via Nixle. Uh, you can certainly sign up for city news, press releases, emergency updates um, by going to our uh, city website slash email list. Uh, and uh, you give us your email and we'll push information to you. We'll make it easy. We'll just push it to you. Um, and so uh, as we wrap up this evening, I, I do need to say a couple thank yous. Um, but uh, uh, I'm going to point out somebody who's sitting back here at the back table. So Molly Nolte, uh, she's the one who's been clicking. Uh, she is our management information specialist. And Molly joined the team in March of this past year, so she's new to the city. Uh, and she is just doing great, great work in the manager's office. Her job is to keep the community for, informed, to keep the city workforce informed, um, and to spread the good news. And she does a, a superb job of that. Um, her first big project, uh, I guess, was the Festival Street celebration earlier this fall. Maybe there were some prior to that, but that's one that's coming to mind. Um, and then she was responsible for our legislative roundtable that we did these past two weeks, or two weeks ago. Um, and then this is her first state of the city. Although I think originally you thought that it was just it's called the Satsi, right? Yeah, okay. Satsi, yeah. Um, but uh, at this rate, uh, I want to invite Molly up because I got a coin to recognize her and say thanks for the great work that you've done. Okay. And, uh, you know, that doesn't. Uh, um, 
it's not easy to do all those things because um, there's a lot of coordination. Uh, she does a superb job, um, but she's also helped out by a great team of interns in our office. We have two interns, um, Jordan Salzman sitting right here. Uh, he's a master's uh, program student for public administration at NIU. And then Anna Catlin uh, is our other intern. She's not here tonight, uh, but she is a uh, student at UW-Whitewater uh, in the communications program. Um, and we've run those programs for the past five plus years. Um, we've got a great history with NIU and we appreciate Jordan and Anna's um, help and all that you do because uh, they work cheap and they produce great results. They really do. Um, and then of course, uh, Maggie Dar, uh, the assistant to the city manager, also known as the A2CM. No one ever quite gets that, but uh, uh, she is the assistant to the city manager um, and she was in Molly's uh, role previously. She does a great job too. Um, folks, I would tell you uh, that, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a great 2018. Uh, 2019 is looking to be even better. Um, we're very, very thankful for all that this community does to support the city. Uh, to the folks out there that have been specifically and personally supportive of me, I would like to say thank you for the, uh, for the personal and professional support and encouragement. Um, I need to thank our City of Janesville team. Uh, we already gave them a round of applause, but uh, they do some amazing work for this community. Uh, folks, if you've got any questions, um, we can open it up for questions or we can call it a night. Any questions out there? Nothing? All right. Listen. Yep, Jim. Uh, for Festival uh, Street, are they uh, planning on having a farmer's market there? Some no, they are not. They're going to stay on North Main Street. So I'd love for them to go to the festival street, but uh, I don't think they're necessarily inclined to do that. Um, and so we're not going to put any, we're not going to put the thumb screws on them and tell them they have to move. We just hope that they see the light and shift over there someday. All right. You okay back there, Emily? All right, good. Any other questions? Yep, Richard. Uh, one uh, about the roads up at uh, Oak Hill Cemetery. Yep. I heard that some of it was going to be repaved. Yes. So if anybody's been to Oak Hill Cemetery, uh, they will know that uh, that the roads up there are in atrocious condition. Uh, and so we have established a, um, you know, essentially a program. Public Works has put this together where every year we'll put some money aside uh, to repair roads in uh, Oak Hill Cemetery. And so we're going to start that program this year. I don't know whether whether it's you know 500 feet, a thousand feet, I just don't know off the top of my head. Um, but Cullen Slaypack and the engineering department have figured out which ones are the worst and need to be done this year. And then as we move forward, what's that cycle look like? But that program will start this year, and I'm excited about it because they are in terrible shape. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay, folks. I just want to say thank you again for attending this evening and coming out. Okay. was another busy and exciting year in the city of Janesville. The assessor's office began implementing a citywide revaluation which will be completed in 2019. JATV celebrated their 50th episode of Park Place Views, an informative Janesville-centric show that will air into 2019. As a result of the first employee engagement survey in city's history, the Human Resources Office is now underway with developing a new and improved personnel policy manual. The clerk treasurer's office successfully reassigned 10 polling places and maintains their excellent working relationships with the polling places as well as poll workers. Through the hard work of the economic development team, the city entered into tax increment financing or TIF agreements that created over $24 million in private investment and 66 new jobs. And of course, we have lots of great work being done behind the scenes by our IT finance and attorney's offices. We're looking forward to another busy and exciting year in the city of Janesville, and we thank the residents of Janesville for allowing us to serve them. Good evening, I'm here to represent the Public Works Department. I'll run through some of the activities that have been going on with the division in 2018, and we'll go from there. Building Inspection Division had a number of new residential building permits of 82 and 24 commercial permits that were 
done in 2018, and that's uh, uh, seven more than what was done in 2017 for a total of about 3,700 permits. So those guys are busy there taking care of that stuff. Uh, planning division, uh, working with a consultant to redevelop the former GM site. Uh, also worked on Centennial Park and worked with the construction of the two new motels that are going on in town. Uh, they also approved the development of the Cheyenne Production Facility and many other projects around the community. Next division is Parks. Parks worked on the fitness court in the downtown, uh, did some playground equipment replacement at Excalibur and Prairie Park, and also worked with the pickleball court installation at Riverside Park, in addition to maintaining nearly 2,600 acres of parkland throughout the community. The utility division, one of the main things they worked on to, uh, completing in 2018 was to change out of all the radio read meters or to save personnel and to allow for more productive customer service. Uh, this program will continue for the next few years to change out the uh, manual read system so we can go more remotely for a radio reading system from City Hall. Also being proactive on the grease control program, doing grease trap inspections in restaurants and encouraging people not to dump grease down their drains. This will help reduce sewer backups in the sewer system. The next division is engineering. Continuing with the 12 mile street repair, repair program in 2019, uh, one of the big uh, projects was the removal of the Monterey Dam and continued to work with the Town Square project and other annual projects around the community. The division was responsible for managing 24 contracts that were bid and constructed in 2018. And finally, the Operations Division. One of the major projects that they worked on was the expansion of the landfill. Uh, that was a, a, a major project. and working with the solid waste program. Also, the division maintains the streets and storm sewers in the community, as well as collect the solid waste on a weekly basis. And that's for the Department of Public Works. Hi, I'm Jennifer Petrozello. I'm your Neighborhood and Community Services Director. The city's Department of Neighborhood and Community Services includes the city's recreation, transit, and housing divisions. And I feel very fortunate to be able to work with those areas of our community. Uh, tonight, I wanted to share with you just a couple of the things that we've been working on here in 2018 and into 2019 um, in each of those areas. So one of the highlights is in our recreation division. We just received the results of an indoor sports complex feasibility report. Uh, this is really a first step for the Janesville community in considering uh, whether or not expanding and offering an indoor sports facility uh, makes sense for our community. Um, over the next couple of months, we'll be spending a lot more time looking at funding options and alternatives, as well as looking at potential sites where such a facility could be located. And I hope to be talking to the community more about that in 2019. In the transit department, we were really fortunate in 2018, we received several grants for bus replacements. Um, one of those grants came from the Federal Transit, Transportation Administration, excuse me. Um, and another grant came from the State of Wisconsin Department of Administration. Uh, with those two grants, we now have funding available for us to replace 14 of our 17 transit buses. Um, Fortunately, our buses are all beyond their expected life expectancy, meaning that they're greater than 12 years old or more than 500,000 miles. So in 2019, we'll be looking to make those, those purchases of replacement buses, and also we'll be continuing to apply for grant funding to help us secure financing for the remaining three bus replacements. And the last area I wanted to talk to you about is our housing division. Um, in 2018, we were really proud to kick off what's called a vacant building program. The vacant building program was one step in our neighborhood revitalization efforts. It has allowed us to create a registry 
of vacant residential and commercial properties and to build in place an inspection program to make sure that those properties are not becoming a blighting negative influence for the neighborhood while they're in a vacant status. And in the upcoming year, we're going to be looking, taking a kind of a creative look at some of our housing programs. We are hoping to partner with developers to bring more affordable housing options here in Janesville. Um, in addition to continuing to offer our traditional housing rehabilitation programs for low-income homeowners um, who want to make sure that they've got their home decent, safe, and affordable. Thank you, and look forward to 2019. 2018 was a very good year for our community. Um, what we saw was the continuation of a very low uh, crime rate. We don't have all of our statistics yet, but uh, every indicator is that it uh, continues with the historic low uh, crime rate in Janesville. Uh, some of the particular programs that we worked in 2018, uh, one was our mental health awareness flag and building relationships with those that suffer from mental illness in our community. Um, we continue to work with our partners and collaborate with others to provide the best service that we can. Uh, we believe if we can avoid a crisis moment that uh, everyone receives better service and officers don't have to use uh, force. Another new program in 2018 was a drone project. We received um, financing from a private entity for a drone and we're able to use that on critical incidents, um, reconstruction of crashes, uh, flood information uh, with these uh, drones. Uh, throughout this year, we continued to work with our central city neighborhoods and uh, build uh, trust. Uh, most note was that we have the uh, neighborhood block parties where we um, have our officers uh, come into a neighborhood and we have a small uh, block party and we invite those that typically don't trust the police and that has worked out uh, very very well for us. Looking into uh, next year we recognize that home issue in our community and we're putting some programming in place and looking for uh, partners to address the homelessness issue and hope to provide some relief there. And we are always looking over the horizon for what issues may impact um, the police, both on a national level and on a local level. And we put projects in place to address those issues. So we again look for a very good year in 2019. 2018 proved to be another busy year for the Janesville Fire Department responding to 10,257 calls for service. The department responded to 3,080 fire and rescue responses and 7,197 EMS calls for service. This is a slight increase over 2017. With a slight decrease in EMS calls, we've seen an increase in fire responses. The department's structure fire response decreased over the past year. The request for service that we've seen an increase in 2018 was for lift assists. In an effort to meet the community's needs, the fire department replaced seven cardiac defibrillators and 12 auto manual defibrillators. As a cost-saving effort to the city of Janesville, the department entered into a joint purchase with the city of Evansville EMS for an approximate cost savings of $26,000. <coughs> Equipment is reviewed annually in relation to its current performance and maintenance cost. The anticipated life expectancy of a defibrillator is eight years. <clears throat> With additional funds the city received through the state's expenditure restraint program, the fire department was able to fund three additional positions for 2018. With this increase, it puts the fire department three personnel above the staffing level of 1980. This increase allowed the fire department to place a fifth ambulance in service when adequate staffing was allowed. We plan to continue this practice in 2019 when staffing allows. The fire department replaced two ambulances in 2018. The department seen frequent maintenance issues with its reserve fleet. Vehicle replacement is reviewed annually in relation to current vehicle performance and maintenance cost. The current life expectancy of an ambulance is seven years. Both ambulance, the ambulances that were replaced had exceeded their life expectancy. 
In 2019's capital improvement plan, the department plans to replace an additional ambulance. Upon delivery of this vehicle, all ambulances within the fire department's fleet will be within the expected life expectancy of that vehicle. The fire department received a number of state and local grants in 2018. With these funds, the department was able to add additional equipment and services. Equipment that the department was able to purchase included EMS response bicycles, drones, and a utility task vehicle. Grant funds allowed for the purchase of equipment used in a newly formed TEMS program. The tactical EMS program incorporates EMS personnel in a tactical response with law enforcement. There has been a lot of positive things going on in the Janesville Fire Department, and we look forward to an exciting 2019. My name is Brian McCormick. I'm the library director at Hedberg Public Library. And I thought I'd just recap a few of the exciting things that happened at the library in 2018. Um, you know, the Hedberg Public Library, obviously, we're a library, just like anyone else. We have lots of books, programs, services. But I think what really sets us apart is our staff. And I know you maybe can't see this, but we do have a great staff, a great shot of all of us right after a training. Here we are, we had a great time together, and just, you know, it, it's just such a, a great place to work. The Bookmobile is another uh, outreach that tool that we use at the library, and uh, Megan Johnson is our Bookmobile driver, and she has really taken that up another level, She's done a lot of neat stuff, visiting the schools, getting around to the parks, and really uh, getting to know the community and the neighborhoods and working with the kids. Um, QuestCon. QuestCon has really become a neat event. Kind of use that to showcase our end of summer activities. Uh, basically, it's you know kids and adults getting dressed in their um, their costumes or really kind of letting their inner geek go, if you will. And we have had we've been lucky enough to have uh, one of the Star Wars groups come every year. So we always have several Darth Vader's, stormtroopers walking around. And it's a great way to kind of end the summer activities at the library. Um, many of you know that we have a renovation project that will be starting in 2019. We've been fundraising and working to uh, get the funds to help make that happen. People can be a transformer and help us transform the library. So we've done a number of activities, had a lot of people gift money to the library. We have a number of, you can see some of the people here that have given money to the library to help make that happen. So that will be in looking at April of uh, 2019 for that to start and probably ending in October. So a couple big things. You definitely see a, a much different looking library uh, in Janesville, but one that will really have a lot of uh, activities and rooms and just you know be that place for people to come and and uh, work together and collaborate and kind of be that 21st century library for you. Um, the other big event that we have is the Night at the Library event. And we see some photos there. And that's kind of a murder mystery that we have, we have uh, done. It will be our 10th year doing that. So a lot of fun uh, doing that. It's usually the week before Halloween, so another kind of fun activity that we do. And then. Um, our databases, we have a lot of new business databases uh, for young entrepreneurs or people looking to start up a business. Uh, you, can, you can log in, get some data to help you make some business decisions, help you, you know, build a business plan. So those are a lot of things that we're uh, subscribing to, giving you those resources to help you develop your own business and, and uh, make some decisions to help uh, your decision making. And, uh, oh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, both JATV and Janesville Mobilizing for Change are divisions of the library. So JATV is doing a great job filming uh, city council meetings and events around the city. And Janesville Mobilizing for Change, they're uh, working to educate youth and adults about the dangers of alcohol and, and drug use and opioids and all those things. So. A lot of good things going on at your local library and looking for even better things in 2019.